start in. Hey, Alex. Hey, Ryan. How's it going? <laughs> it's going pretty good, but I think, uh, you know, we're excited about X-Men. We've got a guest waiting, the in, waiting for us. Before we get started, we're going to start on a little bit of a somber note. Uh, the comics community has lost uh, one of their own this week. Uh, Ed Piscor, best known for Hip Hop Family Tree, uh, X-Men Grand Design. Uh, those are probably his two books he's probably the most famous for. And of course, his YouTube channel with Jim Rugg, Cartoonist Kayfabe, something that we've talked about a lot on this channel. Uh, a channel that we have told, you know, go go check it out and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's still still going. Uh, the, the videos are still up and all of that. So go check out all the interviews. And we just wanted to express our condolences to his family and uh, all his close friends that uh, are affected by this. Uh, and that's that's really all I can say. Uh, was that anything, anything you wanted to and that's, there's anything you needed to add? Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a hard week and, um, but yeah, I think, you know, yeah, I think we, you know, good, good to acknowledge and yeah. Yeah. But with that said, we're going to get on with this show so that we could talk about the things that we love, which is also comics and comics media and all that entertaining fun stuff that we all know and love. I don't think, I don't, I'm not sure if Stefania is ready, but we are going, oh, got the nod. We're bringing her in. Stefania, welcome Hi. to Gotham City tonight. <laughs> hello, hello. hello. <laughs> awesome. Is uh, the, nothing. We're just sitting here. We are. We, we're ready to talk X Men. Mm -hmm. I'm always right. ready to talk X Men. Yes. Say, <laughs> so are we. And guess do you know who else is the chat. So let's quickly say a quick howdy do to everyone in the chat. We got toy. Toy Farce here. Oh my gosh, can't speak today. Dorlaxian, Bitter Troll, Rabbit McGavin. I love saying that name. Skylar Davis, Andrews Gaty's Toys, my best friend and yours, Matt Bush, the Ginger Jedi, Unlimited Power, uh, <laughs> Jose Carlos Riviera Jr. Yesterday's podcast, for those who don't know, that's this guy right here, Derek Hoover, double dipping, Charlie Squared, Tony Tapone, uh, Manic Mike. Uh, wow, everyone's chatting. This is really nice. Uh, Legion X is here. Cone Killer Confusor. Brian Brink. He's the master of the charts. Yes, it, I can see people were getting impatient with us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. The the Ryan Dole fan club. That doesn't get any easier uh, to say. But <laughs> it's really. But thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, Blue is here. There, one of Steph's biggest fans. Ah, okay, that's my friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Chad Stewart is here. Christopher Alacron. Oi, Steve Three. My bet one of my best friends down in LA. He is here as well. And Flash739. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for coming and hanging out. Uh yeah. What should we just get right in? Well, first off, let's talk about our guests. Let's put a little spotlight on you. Uh, you have taken the Instagram, like Instagram and probably TikTok as well, uh, cosplay by storm within the past year uh, with your amazing rogue. I hate calling it content. So I'm just going to say entertainment <laughs> <laughs> because it has been nothing short of entertaining. It's been so good. Uh, and yeah, t like how did like rogue, why rogue? When did rogue start? When is, when did the whole X-Men thing kick in for you and how did you get introduced to X-Men? Well, as all mutant powers manifest, it all <laughs> comes from <laughs> tragedy or in my case, uh, a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, <right. laughs> so like i know i really got somber there yeah. um so this was before i i graduated college um i graduated in 2021 and it was you know still covid time and i my junior year covid started 2020 and it was like awful for me um and well it was great at first right because you know staying home whatever <laughs> But then over time, I was like, hey, this is getting 
terrible and I do not like staying home and I miss seeing my friends and all. And I was on social media a lot. I got TikTok finally because everybody had it. I think like end of 2019, I got it. And so I was just scrolling and scrolling. And I saw like cosplay content and I was like, oh, that was cool. I love dressing up. Ever since I was a kid, I loved Halloween. Um, so dressing up was my thing and That's doing theater. Starts. Yep, yeah. doing theater, dressing up. I always was so excited when we got our costumes. <laughs> and um, I I kind of discovered Rogue. I, it's very hard to pinpoint it because my memory is so bad. But I really started getting into X-Men during COVID. So that's when I saw the animated series. I binged all that. Um, but Rogue is a character that I kind of made up. <laughs> <laughs> so... Let me let me give you some backstory on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I I enjoy creating characters in my head. Ever since I was a kid, I loved storytelling and fantasy stuff. And Star Wars is really like my first big franchise I got into when I was a kid. Hundred um, <laughs> percent. And <laughs> and I kind of came up with this character in my head that could absorb powers from other superheroes or villains and um but she would keep them permanently so i kind of made her op um <laughs> and <laughs> i never gave her a name because i'm terrible with names okay i can come up with cool concepts and stuff characters never can do names i can't do it so one day i was scrolling on the internet and i was looking up like really strong marvel women superheroes and i think i was looking her up because um i don't know i wanted to cosplay i guess because i actually was rogue for halloween on in october in 2020 um this is at work though <laughs> like i dressed up as rogue and it, it's a wild picture to look back at because it's only one i took <laughs> with the group and i'm like wow i look so so different i i lost like 40 pounds just <laughs> so you know so i look right. completely different in that photo <laughs> um and it's scary to look back at but <laughs> i uh i just looked up these lists and i found rogue on some of them and i noticed she had the same traits of the character that i came up with so i was like oh, I, did I just make up a character? Did I just create a character that was like already created? Um, and that's where her name came. Her name, like I actually invented her. That's where my character's name came from. I saw her and I was like, oh, okay. So she's Rogue. Whoever I created, that's Rogue. Um, and from then on, I just was obsessed with her. I learned more about the X-Men. I binged it during COVID. And I can really say that X-Men kind of saved me during COVID because COVID was just like so rough for me i was working like six days a week and you know trying to balance this at home school thing and, and working and not being able to see my friends and stuff so i really owe it to the x-men for uh for my time during covid um and then before i graduated this was like a few months before i had like this mental breakdown because i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do for my future i don't know what's going on because i was supposed to go to france for an internship and that got canceled because of covid and i tried three times to go and my life is a mess right now <laughs> and i kind of needed like something to help me out right and at the time i was going to physical therapy because i was in a car accident <laughs> okay oh I, there's a lot to this story guys like, <laughs> yeah i was in a car accident i had a mental breakdown <laughs> i just went through it um and I, uh, okay, so I, I went to PT and I always went to this, this was like a few days after I had my mental breakdown. <laughs> Every time I went, I would sit in the same spot. Uh, there was like these rows of tables and these curtains would divide, uh, every patient and it was like an open gym area. So people could like exercise and stuff. Um, and I always sat in this one spot when I went in. And this time that I went, it was like busy and it was never busy before. So I was like, okay. So then they had me go in and I went to this bench that was all the way down on the other side of the gym that I've never sat at before. And it was just, it was by, I was by myself too, just completely open area. I was like, okay, it's kind of weird. Um, and there was no curtains, which was kind of weird too. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was like massaging my neck and stuff. And it was just out in the open like that. Anyway, um, <laughs> And 
I was just sitting there waiting for my PT. It took a while. It was like 10 minutes. And I was like looking around and stuff. And I had noticed these exercise bikes. And on the bottom, something caught my eye. And it was the name Rogue. And <laughs> I did not know at the time that Rogue was a, a brand, equipment brand. So I was like, that's weird. <laughs> Why is her name just like on a bike? Um, and I had never seen these bikes before because I was in a completely different area of the gym. So new point of view of everything. And I was like, it's kind of weird because I was just had a mental breakdown the other day where I was like, I, I kind of was like freaking out and I, I um, needed just like something like a sign almost. And that I felt like that was like my sign. Um, and I freaked out. So I was like, what the hell? Um, and then I kind of just left it at that. And then my PT came and I just did whatever. So. That was kind of where it all started. That's my origin story, really, of how wow. I yeah, am here. The universe today. was. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild. Like now that I'm talking about it again, it's just like there's a lot of things that happen that are like crazy for me yeah. to just be where That's I like... am right now. Like, how did you get into that? Well, let me take you back to where it all started. <laughs> well, see, I was like, because again, like, it's... mine's just so simple. It was like, I saw a comic magazine that had Jim Leard on the cover. And then that was yeah. it. Was Boring. Like, right? Now no, I'm like, mine oh, is I'm... like, mine is like, you know, Lord of the Rings. I was traveling with hobbits to, you know, <laughs> find the right. Like, it's, yeah, that's my journey. Yeah. And just yeah, think that's of what it, it was. Peloton none of this would have happened <laughs> peloton wasn't a peloton i <laughs> know if it was it was peloton yeah <laughs> but uh, yeah I, I don't know if there's a hero named peloton but maybe hey, maybe not yet maybe not yeah yet. in some yeah. other universe some yeah. other universe yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll watch it'll have it'll show up in the last episode <laughs> what what some, some new mutant that we've never seen before will show up <laughs> it'll, it'll happen but it's like that's i gotta say though that's quite the journey from going from like all of that yeah. and then going to the to the red carpet premiere of the 97 i know i you, you told Angeles. me like a year ago that i would be going to the premiere of x-men 97 and i'd be like that's pretty far-fetched because i don't even have like fifty thousand followers so i don't know how that would happen i don't even know people you know right um, but yeah <laughs> i feel like here's what it is for me i think ever since new york comic-con everything's just been like going up and i want to knock on wood real quick because um <laughs> i don't want to jinx all that <laughs> so. right well, no, I think you're doing great. I think the, like, you even did a video not too long ago. Might be, every, my time is a blur at the moment. Uh, but Mine always is, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you did one where you were, like, ranking all the best costumes that Rogue had. And oh, I yeah, was, my like, YouTube oh, video. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, this is fun. See, this is <laughs> what I want to like. know. Something real funny is that I recorded that at, like, the very end of December. But I didn't oh. have time to post it or edit it until like recently when I just posted it like last month. Like I got so busy with with my work and I was like, I don't I recorded this video and now it's like almost spring. I recorded this in the winter. So it was kind of weird. I, I couldn't get out in time and it is what it is. I got it out. I'm not very good <laughs> with consistency on YouTube. So <laughs> that's the that's but, the one thing I noticed too. It's like you have to. Like, so I would try to do a show every week here. Mm -hmm. The one thing we learned about YouTube, it's not necessarily matter how, like, how good your quality is, how long your videos are. Mm -hmm. Are you consistent? And that's yeah. what YouTube, mm -hmm. like, picks up for people. Like, it's absolutely bonkers. Uh, yeah. But yeah, but you're, but since then, too, like, you've, like, now you've been, you've been, like, hitting the comic shops. Oh, yeah. Like, so I've right? been, right? Like, yeah, I've been doing that. You know, actually, you want to know what my first comic that I bought was? It oh. was yeah. Avengers Annual 10. My very oh, first comic. Wow. And, <laughs> hear me out. And it was my very first Comic Con I went to that I bought it at. And I was dressed as Rogue. Perfect. <laughs> so somebody from one of these uh, vendors, uh, they were like, Rogue. And I turned around. Um, and he said that he had my first appearance comic there. I was like, no way. And, uh, I bought it. <laughs> I was like, I, that, that's, that's a simple story. Okay. Yeah. Not like my right. whole... That's good. Yeah. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Bye. 
my first X-Men comic had Savage Land Rogue on the cover and uh my mom was not. Oh, it was the one with Magneto? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got the, actually I have I have Savage Land Rogue behind me too. She's up there. Yeah, I've got the, the print. I got the the Sag Yeah, I got a framed print from uh uh Jay Scott Campbell of that. Ooh, one. I Ooh. love him. Right, Quite a so flex one there. of my favorite artists. Quite a flex. Yeah, we could just go back. <laughs> well, I got this. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it's like, because again, too, X Men was my number one. It got me into into comics and superheroes in general. Like that was the that was the book. And then mm -hmm. you know, back in the late 1900s, we had like Marvel cards, mm -hmm. and so like you know that that was our Wikipedia. That's what we used, and you know that's how we oh. got into it. Yeah, I actually, I don't know if you saw my Instagram story today, but I have a first appearance executioner and I i have two copies of it. And one is just in a regular sleeve and board. The other one, it had like uh, writing on it, uh, like print on it saying uh, trading card inside. And Perfect. I didn't know until today that that comic was in like the cereal boxes or something it was like Whoa. in the 90s i don't know i i look oh i just hit the mic <laughs> uh, i don't know if it picked that up <laughs> but i i think it was because i i turned it over I, it was sealed in a sealed bag plastic bag with the trading card in the back of it and, and you there could was captain crunch stuck on the back of it <laughs> <laughs> no that would have been real funny like from the 90s captain crunch yeah. that would have been interesting actually but it wasn't captain crunch it was this like cereal brand that i didn't know um and i it sounded like they had comics in the cereal box or if not maybe the trading cards in the cereal boxes so you hmm. had to collect them all and you i think there were like seven cards that you could collect and this so this comic had executioner in the back of it i haven't opened it but um, when I do plan to open it, I think I'd want to get it signed by the voice actor uh, who played Executioner right. and who also played mm. Cable in the original show. Right. Um, and probably the trading card, too, if I ever want to do that. But, yeah, <laughs> I thought it was really cool. So were hey, you were you? A I'm going to be right or... back, you guys. I got oh. something buzzing at my door. One second. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> He's yeah. Ryan's just going to fetch his more impressive memorabilia to show. So were, you, were you a collector before getting into X-Men or is this like all sort of new uh, post COVID stuff? It happened a bit during COVID. Uh, well, mm -hmm. okay. So my first thing that ever, that I ever bought uh, collectible wise was a Funko pop. It was the, I think it was the gold Loki Funko pop, the 10 year mm -hmm. anniversary one. So that came out in 2018 probably because 2008 was when iron man came out so around 2018 so that's when i really started i guess it was kind of like oh i love loki he's my favorite character i want to buy this um and then i think during covid it kind of just progressed a bit more that's when i got this whole set up behind me yeah it's quite uh impressive display <laughs> yeah so i have lights on it so i could brighten it if i want to oh, sick. it's way too bright though i could put it on cool or warm, whatever. But yeah, oh, I, lower <laughs> I love that uh, the Funko Pop Sentinel down there. <laughs> yeah. So I ha okay, Gambit fell over. You know something about Gambit falling over. You know, I think it's because of the whole Magneto Rogue thing. But <laughs> yeah. That Gambit fell over like a while ago, and I never picked him up. And then the Gambit over <laughs> there, Gambit. my Marvel Legends, fell over like a month ago, and I never uh. picked him up. So. I, it's, it's not, not good, like not looking good for Gambit. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like not good, I just good omens. <laughs> yeah, no, really, like they knew that Magneto Rogue were uh, were together. Oh my god, my light under my desk is like flashing now. Weird. Anyway, but, so but it, and you're it sounds like you're accumulating quite the comic book collection as well. Um, yeah. So I have I could tell you exactly how many comics I have right now. So I have an app that I use. Um, I have in my collection. No, um, 815 comics. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm actually shocked wow. about that. Wait, <laughs> no, hold on, hold on. Wait, I think this is um, all comics. No, this is part of my, oh wait, hold on. It's counting my wish list ones too, but let's see. In my collection, here we go. Okay, it's a better number. 780 comics. Wow, that's still 
in my collection. <laughs> yeah, so, but there's actually ones that I'm um, I have a lot of duplicates, not a lot, mm. but like a, a good bunch. Um, so I'm Do probably buy, gonna sell those. And... Or... <laughs> no, because it's like I forgot I had this comic, oh. so I <laughs> bought it. But uh, I I have to um, sell some of them because I just I have way too much and ones that I really don't want. So I, mean, I think either I'm going to sell it to my comic shop or just sell them online, whichever is better <laughs> for me. <laughs> the Purge. That was what was at your door? No. That, oh, gosh. <laughs> no, I was just talking about get it like when you get rid of comics. I always refer oh, yeah. to it as the Purge because it's. <laughs> It's tough to do sometimes. And then oh, yeah. you get to a point where you have too many and you're like, okay, time to time to change. Yeah, it was 740. That. I mean, that's quite a lot. That's what? <laughs> and that's there, like what? Three long I boxes? Have, I have two long boxes <laughs> and three short boxes. Oh, yeah. See, that's that's easy to get rid of. And if you take it to your comic shop, you might be able to get credit at your comic shop. Yeah, so I actually might do that. Oh, to get more stuff. Because I did it before. I had, I bought this mystery box from Unknown Comics, um, and I had, I kept comics that I wanted, and then the rest I just brought to my comic shop and traded it in for credit. So I got to use mm. that for a while. Yeah. See, because then you can just cycle. Like a, just keep some of these cycling. comic stores. They're kind of kind of becoming libraries. <laughs> it, dude my plate so i got new shelves this week like specifically to house all of my uh marvel epic collections mm. how There's, many collections do you have uh, enough to need a new shelf <laughs> <laughs> so i've been getting like all the spider-man ones all the x-men ones and then yeah uh, and getting excalibur and wolverine so mm -hmm. it's been and then I've been picking up, you know, the random Captain America one here, maybe maybe some sensational She-Hulk. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just it started to accumulate fast because they're yeah. they're big. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I it's funny because it's like I like I sit there and go, am I, am I reading all of these? And then sure enough, I am. I am reading all of these. It's just like, you know, I, I go through them yeah. pretty quick, but I, I love having them. Those big volumes just right there. Yeah, I have uh, a few Omnis. So I they right now take up space in my bottom shelf, my bookcase. And I have, I think I have Extreme X-Men Volume 1 or, yeah, Volume 1. And then I have, um, I think, X-Men Volume 2. I have, I believe, a Star Wars one, too, High Republic. Yep. which I got these all on sale too. And I was like, Oh, I want to start reading higher public. Cause I never have before. I don't know like the lore and all that. So I bought that as well, hmm. but extreme X-Men is one of my favorite, uh, comic storylines. So, okay. So that's like, that one. That is like right in the middle of like the Grant Morrison era. Yeah. It's right? like, the, or it's the beginning. I remember yeah. kind of like having to choose my like allegiance. Like, do I, uh, no grant morrison's my world now like i can't go back to <laughs> <laughs> and then it's funny as soon as we get astonishing x-men we're like right back into the thick of it like yeah like, yeah and, th and that one too that one get, uh, that gets an epic collection this year i believe yeah i'm right. gonna try and get uh like any of the new ones that are coming out i'm gonna try and get some because i have the marvel unlimited app but mm. sometimes i just right. want a physical copy of the stories just to read and mm. like not the comics because i want to keep those in good condition as long as i can so having the uh the epic collections really help with that yeah that's mm. i agree i think the the one thing i love about the epic collections it's like getting a it's like getting a blu-ray special edition yeah dvd because you get like sometimes you get like the the pencils for some of the pages then you get all the ads yeah. the interviews from wizard Mm -hmm. uh here's all the trading card art that came out that year yeah. of these particular mm -hmm. characters it's it's super cool like i i love those a lot like it's and like what well there's another there's an x-men one uh coming out this month as well end of the month yeah and now i can't remember which volume it is but i do know that it's rogue and gambit making out on the cover oh oh that i know that one cover yeah that's, yeah that's um I think X Men twenty four. I think Is so. Yeah. Yes. Good. Yeah. yeah twenty four. That was good. 
That was good. <laughs> now I gotta look it up just to confirm. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna look like a fool. Hey, no, well, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, it is 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, <laughs> if you're wrong, this chat will let you know. Do not worry. <laughs> I am sorry. wrong all the time. And I think I, it's like a game the chat likes to play of let's correct all. <laughs> it's <laughs> I know I haven't been looking at the chat. It's like all my second screen. So it's like all the way to the right, and I haven't been seeing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. There's a lot. I'll have to go through that after. <laughs> That's so funny. Let's see. Uh, yeah. And you know what? And speaking of making out and X-Men, that was a really bad segue. The uh, <laughs> We should talk about <laughs> this week's episode. Well, there was... technically, technically, there is a make out. There's a couple. Well, there's, a, there's, there's a make out. There's some... The the greatest love triangle in an animated series I have seen since probably what Rom to half maybe where everyone's dating each other but that's like anime so everyone's always dating each other in anime but I think <laughs> as far as just like like I can't think of any time like the the did you ever watch the '90s Spider Man series while you were on your X Men '90s kick I haven't and I that's started okay. it. And I was like, I don't know, I can't continue. It's something it's, has I, it has to do with like, <laughs> oh, I I need to just sit down and force myself to watch it. And then also like, uh, I'm I feel like I'm older and I just can't watch it like I used to, you know. But I have to get, get into it. it. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's Did you it's get fine. Where the X Men show up at least. Yeah, <laughs> that's like way late, man. That's like up. season five. Yeah. Season two. No, that's season yeah. two. Oh, I saw that episode. Two? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of just skipped all of it and saw that episode. <laughs> well, there's a well, love cause... triangle in that series of like Mary Jane, uh, I was about to say Norman, Harry Osborne, <laughs> and, and Peter. And it's a, it's not, a, it's pretty cut and dry, that one. <laughs> Even the, yeah. the Morbius Black Cat Peter Parker love triangle is pretty cut and dry too. It's not <laughs> as, uh, it's not as spicy as this Magneto Gambit rogue. Oh, uh, no way. No, it, it's and they're just like letting it simmer, right? Yeah. Like they are just like like and Morph is really to... pushing it too. <laughs> I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's I. This is like one of the first and only times where I've ever been like, oh, poor Gambit. Yeah, like yeah. dude, just the the three spoons of sugar, the coffee. I yeah. know. I was like, oh, was dude. Like, oh, <laughs> hold on. But, but like. Not like, oh my god, like he knows her, her like what she wants, but three spoons of sugar, girl. That's yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. Well, when you um, got the, the, the powers, you can absorb the sugar, I guess. Yeah. Maybe she her metabolism is just like godly. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. But right, clearly like, it must be. <laughs> well, you know, she calls everyone sugar, so it is on brand. It is she does. A little too on brand, but it was just <laughs> But that whole opening, too, of them just, like, that whole opening of the episode of them having, like, just morning coffee together. But that Breakfast. with Gambit just like, yeah. oh, I brought you your coffee, share, you know, just how you like it. And he's he's like, oh, <laughs> Magneto beat you, too. And like, oh, my God. And like, I love that that's, like, Gambit's, like, that's his game, where his game is at is, like, getting her, <laughs> like, her coffee just right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, even the episode beforehand when... <laughs> When Magneto and Rogue are off doing whatever it is they're doing, and yeah. Madeline's like tearing the mansion apart, and she comes in, and she's like, Gambit's there with the ice pack. She's like, Oh, I should have been here, you know, like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he's all like, Oh, it's okay. You know, he looks at Magneto with like the ha ha, right? <laughs> and I'm like, Oh no, yeah. dude, you 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 do not have what Magneto has. You you don't <laughs> you don't know what's it's going that, on. It's that it's that suit. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Everyone says like the way he was leaning against his desk in episode two, I think it was. Yeah. Or, or three. Yeah, two. <laughs> well, you know, Gambit's been like wearing that crop top more and more. Uh, you know, I think he's trying to step up his uh his game. Yep. I and think as he should. shoulder game. He's he has as he to. should. But Alex, you gotta step up your game and we need a Mondo crop top yeah. gambit. Like <laughs> yeah. stat respectfully yes <laughs> <laughs> all right we're listening right excellent <laughs> if, if i need to pitch it well i can talk to hector we can make this happen <laughs> our, let's get a petition going 
<laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, this whole episode. Actually, Alex, I want you to talk about this episode because before before this episode even dropped, you had predictions. Oh yeah, and you were like sixty percent correct. Yeah, I got you know I got a little I had a little fun uh, trying to predict based on the title Motendo, uh, what the premise of the episode was going to be. I mean, it's like, it doesn't take much to figure out it's going to involve video games and Mojo because of Motendo. And it's a cool idea of like, oh, you know, updated for the late 90s, we're moving away from television and into video games. Mojo's trying to stay hip, trying to stay, trying to stay fresh where the audience is right uh, where the demographics are going so yeah like i was like video game it's definitely gonna be a video game episode and then it reminded me uh, so i was like so video games it's probably gonna involve jubilee because she's like the arcade kid um and then i had this idea of like oh like motendo is probably like an actual console so it's gonna show up so from there i was like it reminded me of i was reminded of the uh, the annual x-men annual where like night it's nightcrawler's birthday and he gets like a mysterious present um, that like blows up in his face and sends him to hell. And then the X-Men have to kind of like venture into hell to like save Nightcrawler. Right. So I was like, oh, maybe it's going to be something kind of like that. where like, it's Jubilee's birthday. She gets a Motendo game and it like sucks her into the video game world. And the X-Men have to like go in after, you know, to, to save her. Um, so it turns out like it, that the those were my predictions. I, I also predicted that the video game world would like reference a lot of different video game genres, like you know, like over time. Um, and I also predicted that Magneto would show up in the video game world and say "Welcome to Die," uh, which of course didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> crushingly, <laughs> crushingly, um, yeah. But then, but then I found out that that apparently, like details for this episode actually did leak like a little while back, and so like there was the like you know it was it was known that it was like Jubilee's birthday and stuff. So like that was, <laughs> I my prediction was less like impressive because <laughs> the information was already out there. I just didn't know. <laughs> but I didn't um, know, so that made it. Over. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, I was impressing Ryan. You know. It's, <laughs> But this is this is cool. I like that it looks like a Super Nintendo mixed in with a Sega Genesis. Yeah. And it's the uh Mutant Apocalypse cartridge from Super yeah. Nintendo. Very cool. Uh I I noticed that like right away. I <laughs> and I was I just thought this was like super cool. I just thought this is it doesn't get any more 90s than this. Yeah. I was hoping Jubilee would like it, like it wasn't working and jubilee would just take it out and blow on it and put it back in <laughs> oh i was waiting for that been, <laughs> that would have been a good that would have been a good shout out too like it was again like just it was weird yeah because i think we we're saying too like this is kind of like two epi two separate episodes in one episode mm, uh, right. man the 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 what is it the 16 bit style uh levels that they did Hang on, let me see if I can get So it. cool. Yeah, yeah, they did such a great job because it's uh, well, especially because I feel like so many people, so many uh, you know, uh people have mentioned their first interaction with X-Men being the arcade game, uh, that then kind of led into the animated series. Like people see, and that was like certainly the case with me. Uh, and I think Kevin was and um uh Jerry were saying that last week as well, like that. It was like the arcade. We saw the arcade first and then the cartoon. So this definitely is like full on nostalgia. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. Su it There was a uh, I like this, too. The Like changing Jean Grey's hair in episode four. I do like these small. Yeah, this, this mm -hmm. show and this episode is full of them, too. And the but I think you're like, because here this has the Marvel versus Capcom, like like the side screens with the half faces and the character in the front. So it's got well, that's it's such like a deep cut too, because it's like in this day and age with the like wide aspect ratio, like this is how you see like old r games that have been remastered. They have to like put those bars, you know, like, bars there. Yeah, you have to fill it with something. <laughs> I love that they did the Capcom thing at the same side, same time doing the Konami six player game, and the whole time I'm watching it, I'm just like, can we just get a sequel to this game where it's just the X Men '97 crew? yeah right and it's again super this is like again this is both like both the capcom fighting games and this are like two of my like favorite things 
Yeah, my my only thing with this episode is that for both parts of the episode, I wish were their own episodes. Like I could have like they're so good. I, I could have used like even more of like the Jubilee and video game land stuff. Like it would have been cool to see some of like the other X-Men in that like pixel art style, even if they're showing up as like game characters like um, this image is sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm 100% with you on that, too. I would have loved to have, because so far, I kind of was hoping there's going to be, this is going to be sound total biased, but I do, uh, like, you know, my Canadian bias. I wanted more Wolverine in this episode just because of mm, that yeah. as well, right. hoping that they were going to do some of the stuff from the X-Men game. Uh, and he's also been benched kind of for the first few episodes yeah. of this. Like, I think it has big to time. do with the fact that he was so focused in the animated series a lot so mm. they kind of right. benched him I, for a bit i was wondering if that was the case and that which also mm -hmm. wouldn't surprise me but i'm also not offended by that as well well yeah, this is because... kind of rare to get like a jubilee centric episode yeah. given like the previous series like because you know each yeah. of the x-men kind of got their own episodes mm -hmm. but jubilee didn't really other than night of the sentinels the the pilot so it is sort of like let, letting some of these other characters have a little more front and center. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, uh, Steph, I'm going to bring this question to you. Did did you have any idea of who this was going to be? Oh, we're getting into spoilers, by the way, big time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so for some reason, I thought that was like long shot before I knew it was a female character. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's long shot. I don't know why he's wearing that, but like, it would make sense if he was there. Um, and then I kind of was surprised that it was a clone of Jubilee um, at like older when mm. she revealed herself. So that's who right. I thought it was. But I'd, obviously, you know, I didn't see the powers yet. I just saw like the figure. So I was like, oh, it's long shot. Mm. But no, it wasn't. <laughs> I thought it could maybe yeah. be Dazzler too, because Dazzler yeah. was in her like Mojo World Rebel yeah. outfit, kind of similar. I I absolutely thought it was Dazzler at first because I was like, oh, they're gonna do another homage to the game. Hmm. And uh, so when she took off the helmet, I was like, whoa, wait, what? Whoa! <laughs> like this is not better from a story perspective. Like this, you know, right. I I really like the theme of this episode of mm -hmm. growing up kind of moving beyond the uh the sort of familiar tropes of x-men and like we all like this series a lot of it is about like reliving like the fun of the past and you know the the x-men we know and love but like it's also kind of about moving to the next chapter and moving beyond it yeah yeah i like what tony's saying here too the dial-up modem sound uh when they get yeah to i noticed that <laughs> I was like, wow, they really thought of everything. <laughs> they did. I Matrix feel like vibes, like yes. And right. it's funny because like I I'm like super young, so I didn't get to play these growing up. Um so I, I'm only 24. Oh yeah, us too. Us us too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only 24 and I know these sounds because I mean I have two older millennial brothers, so everything that they knew growing up i learned from them yeah so we had yeah. super nintendos we had nintendo 64 we had gamecube we had all of that so those are the games i mean i wasn't playing these games but i was playing games on those consoles so i know those sounds very well <laughs> yeah that's it was it was just a, again it's these little 90s details that makes you just go that's right we're we're still in the 90s yeah uh, and then another great thing about this part of the episode too is the uh the giant boss, like at the end of every fighting game, mm. uh, with this giant mojo. Uh, awesome. This is our next Paz <laughs> Lab, just for those who don't know. Yeah, giant mojo. <laughs> We're and mojo was, it. was great in this, like his dialogue and stuff. It's it's that all that like meta fourth wall stuff is is really always it's fun. fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and having him like he, he like it's cool having mojo and jubilee kind of like aligned in there like as jubilee sort of like wishing that she could just like relive the glory days of x-men and mojo has the same goal because that's like what drives ratings and that's like <laughs> what the people want to see that's what we want to see right mm -hmm. so it's like having those two characters like trying to 
force something that like we should probably be able to move past <laughs> yeah i like that he was like starving and so he's all yeah. skinny at the moment the rating shot up he just yeah. plumped right out like yeah a, I was like, okay. so disturbing. <laughs> so good. Skinny, like, who knew skinny mojo would be such nightmare fuel? <laughs> no, I know. Uh, I would, I had, I would love to see this in live action at some point in my <laughs> life. Uh, I don't think they'll ever. I think it's just one of those characters. I like. We still haven't gotten a proper gambit in live action. So mm. no. Let that's a. Let, <laughs> that, that's that's a touchy subject. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand why, and here's the the whole reason why I titled everybody's hook it up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. And it's and I'm gonna say this was like super refreshing to see in any medium these days. I feel like Star Wars is lacking uh, kissing, making out. Uh, I feel like a lot of just a lot of stuff is, and so yeah. to have it kind of like come back and it being these two, I was like, yes. I was so shocked. I was like, oh my God, girl, now? <laughs> yeah, now. But like, what better yeah. moment, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. And I mean, they're already in her room on the bed. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's her birthday. Let's. <laughs> I know. As like the screen is like transitioning to the next uh, scene, she's like lowering him down. I'm like, girl. Yes. <laughs> right? This show does not so care. Bad. <laughs> this this show just does it i have a feeling because like actually i'm curious if what you two think about this as well because this is something i was thinking about earlier today where the like me working in feature animation when we were working on the first spider-verse movie the the higher ups were not paying attention to us at all <laughs> because they were just like oh this is their silly animated movie right the money is in live action until mm -hmm. that trailer came out and then the eye of Sauron just <laughs> yeah. moved right onto us. <laughs> they were like, Oh my God, people are actually loving something we make. And Sony was shocked. So they, you know, they didn't know what to do, uh, but we were already too far ahead. So we weren't really taking, you know, we weren't really taking the studio executive notes too, too much then. And then for when we were working on the, even the sequel, uh, you know, we got a lot of leeway just because of how well the first one did. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm beginning to think with this one, along with the first Spider-Verse, I have a feeling Disney kind of just went, eh, this is like their little animated fun project. Like, what yeah. if and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think the moment it became their, one of their most watched trailers, that's when also the Eye of Sauron switched yeah. onto yeah. this show. And I think by the time it did, this all this stuff was in there. And I think they're getting away with a lot of more older teen, spicier content. Uh, than that they normally sounds right to me. That seems like an astute observation. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. It's Because, uh, Steph, you were just... Because, again, you were in L.A. not too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, did you hit... You, you hit Disneyland, correct? No, I was only there from... Tuesday to Thursday. Oh, Premier was on Wednesday. Hit a quick sneeze and you're you yeah. were gone. Yeah, it's God. way too expensive in LA for me to stay there longer than three days Fair or like enough. a day and a half. That's you're, the truth. <laughs> you're not wrong. You're absolutely yeah. because I was wondering too, because I noticed no one's really showing off like, hey, Disney Parks has all this X-Men merch. And uh, so that's because um Disney doesn't have the rights in the West Coast to use the X-Men. Whereas Universal, I mean, actually, I don't know about Disney, but Universal has the rights to use the X-Men in their theme parks in oh. the East Coast in Florida. So that's a separate contract that has nothing to do with the shows. Right. So for uh, park attraction characters like the X-Men, right. Universal owns them and they can use them on the east of the mississippi that's the contract east of the mississippi universal has the rights to use the x-men i ha i did go to disney world uh beginning of last year and i did find some x-men stuff there so they do have some merch i don't know about disneyland in california i just know that i don't think they can show their characters there yet at the right. one in california maybe chat would know better than me but i know that universal owns the rights to them um in orlando Oh, still, even like oh, universal they, in california can't do it so it's like right east of the mississippi they have the rights west they don't 
Hmm. That's a wild contract. That's yeah. <laughs> I don't know when it expires or right when it like if it renewed recently or whatever. I, I mean, I think it ex I would say it expires in like I don't know a few years, maybe a bit more. I'm not sure. Right. But, Safe to assume that you've been to Universal in Florida. So last time I went to Universal was 2014, and um, that this counts. was way <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was way before I got into X Men, and we I we didn't even get to go to Island of Adventure because it was like downpouring. We went in the summertime, um, and it was like downpouring, and we kind of like lost a day at Universal, so half the day was spent trying to avoid the rain and right like waiting for the Jurassic Park ride um <laughs> for like 2 hours because of the thunder <laughs> so i missed out on seeing all the marvel characters over there even they even have like uh, avengers characters there too so um yes. and spider-man mm -hmm. so i missed out seeing all of them and I really, really, really want to go back to Universal so badly because I do want to see all the X-Men characters. I know there's that rig, rig, big rogue sign. I switched the letters over there. Yeah. <laughs> um, the rigged rogue the sign. Rigged rogue sign. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's the big rogue uh, sign and Spider-Man and, and Captain America and all that. So I definitely want to go back and see. It I don't is, know if Disney could do it on the West Coast, but I yeah. don't think they can at the moment. It's it's definitely a time capsule at Universal mm -hmm. Florida, uh, yeah. which is great. Like we went, uh, I think he's even here in the chat, uh, Mr. AJ Quick from GhostbustersFans.com, GB fans. Uh, so we went to Universal for Halloween Horror Nights in 2019, and that was my first time at Universal Florida. Mm -hmm. And I should have had it ready. I never even thought about it because I didn't think we were going to go down this route. The uh, I have pictures with Rogue and Storm. Oh man! Uh, Dang! Because I was like, I I lost my mind because I was like, it's it's and it's not even. It, here's the crazy thing: it's not even like it's X Men ninety two. It's Wolverine and the X Men animated series versions of all these characters. So Wait, it's like, really yeah. What? So it's Cyclops in the trench coat. Yeah, like Rogue's what? got a, like a trench coat as well. Like it's and that like storm. black boots. Yeah, black oh, boots? no, no, actually, no, she doesn't have. I think at one time she did have black boots. So the actress who's playing her, she was wearing them. But I now recently I've seen she's in it like a long brown trench trench coat, and then she has the yellow boots on now. So like, I don't know. They might have changed it. Right, like it was, it was wild. Like and yeah. it got, I it got me so excited because it was just one of those things. Like they have X Men here. And yeah. then they're all hanging out in front of this giant Wolverine mural. That's mm -hmm. like, a, like, it, and they have Iceman. Ah, oh, it's just, it's something else. It's something they else. They have Iceman? So, they have Iceman? They have Iceman, like a giant Iceman <laughs> there and a giant storm. It's like a Joe Majera. Oh, that's amazing. Storm. Like it's just, what? it's wild. Dude, you're wow. blowing my mind. You've never been I'm, either. Guys, you know, I mean, in, in the last time, I mean, I, I remember seeing <laughs> stuff from the Universal X Men of a long time ago, and it, it was mm -hmm. like 90s era. I had no idea they were like updating the stuff. Oh my gosh. We are going <laughs> to, we are, yeah, that's it. We're doing a group trip. I'm taking you all there. <laughs> we we got to make this happen because it's, again, you have to do the Spider Man ride. It is, mm, I've heard that. So yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, I still have not done the. I've been to Disneyland like twice since they've opened the Web Slingers, uh, over in at California Adventure, and I still mm. haven't. I'm I'm going on it next month. I don't care because uh, <laughs> I've got to go for Star Wars nights. That's just that's the rule as well. So I gotta I gotta do that that Spider Man ride there. But I was kind of hoping they would have like a whole like X Men store at Disneyland <laughs> at the event. It's, yeah. it's gonna happen. Like yeah. You know, Especially if this, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I imagine it's going to happen. I think they could have merch there at least. It's just the characters can't yeah. show up. Yeah, because mm -hmm. this is a Disney. This is a Disney store yeah. before the Disney store is closed. And that's when I first realized they are bringing back, they're doing another animated series. Because mm -hmm. they, you know how Disney, they do those like six packs of like figures that look like cake toppers. Right, yeah. So. Oh. Like I, mini figures. I think I have what you're talking about. I mean, I found it at the Disney <laughs> store actually. So it was like right. this pack of all the X Men, and it looks like they could be cake toppers. Yeah. Right. 
And so that's when I noticed the storm would look different. She I was like, this is storm. And even the art on it, I was like, this is new. Like it's same, but different. Mm. And I was like, I think there's a new animated series in the works. And that was like back in like 2020. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, sure enough, it was like they, cause like they sort of at that point too, it was like, they had shirts, they were doing the hoodie. Mm -hmm. They were doing all the stuff that were coming out. And I was, so I was wondering if this was supposed to come out like way sooner. And I think it was, I think this, this did. Think so. Yeah. I think it was pushed a year, but um, yeah. I think it's, I remember what you're talking about, Ryan. And it was this sort of like, it, cause it wasn't the look of this show. It was like they had, it was the animated series characters, but it was a kind of its own redesign. It was like, the, like a, just for merchandise almost like they just made these designs just to quickly put on some different things. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, but it, it, yeah, that's what it kind of felt like, but I was like, now nah, this is too, too stylized. Like the storm itself. Mm. I was like, the storm is too different for it to just not be. Cause she did have the Mohawk, right? It so was kind of that like, yeah. yeah, it was the, the, the silver costume, but with the mohawk, yeah. Right, and that's what that's what tipped me off, because I was like, this isn't just a new updated design for merchandise. They changed her. So hmm. something is something is coming. And I, and I don't <laughs> I can know what. It. I can... Storms are coming. Yeah. <laughs> a new storm. There's a storm coming, Annie. And then, uh, <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> that's a... But here we go. Hang on, sorry. We should... Let's let's go back here for a second. Yeah. Jubilee Sunspot. She's going to make him confident. I do believe after this is because this is what he needed too, And mm -hmm. I think now he's going to definitely be more open with his powers or at least we're going to get there. Uh, but I thought this was and a this great is, way. This is Jubilee growing up. You know, this yeah. is a new thing for Jubilee. We haven't seen her have a, any kind of romantic interest. And so this is like, you know episode ends birthday ends jubilee's in a different place than she was yeah she started mm -hmm. x-men yep. are all about change right yep she gets to yep. she gets the birthday dry humps so i think she's good to go <laughs> i think that's <laughs> how was that not the title of the episode <laughs> yeah i don't know i just thought of that now i was like I all this episode just birthday no dry i mean of instead of motendo yeah oh <laughs> just a generally test if disney's <laughs> watching <laughs> <laughs> like let's see it happen but i thought this was a great and very cute and sweet way to kind of like finish off the, mm. the oh and real quick before we move on oh, from the, yes. the episode uh i want to call out that um old jubilee was voiced by allison court the original voice actress for jubilee mm -hmm. oh uh, right good shout out which is crazy because she's I, I thought it at first it was the new Jubilee voice actress because they sound so similar. Like the, Yeah, I the, thought the so really too. Good, and yeah, then I found out match. after. Yeah. 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 I actually I didn't even realize until it was this episode. Yeah, when you met I saw that and I was like, wait, what? So that's not wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I only thought that uh like AJ and uh Cyclops. Like AJ doing Gambit and and Cyclops, I thought those were the only two new ones. Oh just, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But even Cyclops sounds and and AJ doing uh, Gambit, they both like they both sound mm -hmm. spot on. Like yeah, never and, I, and I love that they're that they're incorporating the the older uh, cast in in different roles like this. Like um, yeah. Valerie Cooper is Catherine Disher, the original mm -hmm. voice of Jean Grey. Like it's really cool that like you know to hear these new uh, you know these actors do it taking on these new parts <laughs> yeah it was also like um allison was kind of passing down the mantle of mm, jubilee yeah. in right. that moment which is really symbolic and and nice to see but yeah, yeah there's um so the original voice actors are rogue storm and that's oh beast and that's it yeah. rogue storm and beast and, and, and wolverine and, and wolverine, and wolverine. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the four. And then who's different is Gambit, um, Magneto, Cyclops, Jubilee, and the voice actor who did um, Gambit, Chris Potter, he is voicing Cable now. Yeah. Um, the old Cable voiced Executioner. Um, 
<laughs> so it's like all swapped, switched, and it's it's like a, a Freaky Friday over here. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it's really cool that they still got to have the original voice actors be part of this show, which is nice. And there was a, a good amount of them at the premiere, actually. So I met Chris Potter. I met AJ. I was like, two gambits in one night. Let's go. <laughs> and I, I, I was like rogue inspired to my yeah. Hellfire look. Um so that was awesome. Yeah, that and looked amazing, also, by the way. That, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, uh, it was, I mean, you get two weeks notice for these things. So you kind of like have to rush if you want to plan. I had something else I originally was going to wear. And then I was like, no, no, no. I got to make this. Like, it was plain, simple. And I was like, I got to make myself stand out. I'm going to be in LA for this event. And I just got to <laughs> stand out. Um, and I was like, why not do an inspired Hellfire Gala look? And so it was inspired by Rogue's second year Hellfire Gala look. Instead of the like um, feathery, not feathery, like a, a fuzzy whatever shawl she was wearing, I went with the feathers because her mother, Mystique, mm. wore feathers in her Hellfire Gala look. And I was like, that's the homage to Mystique. Her destiny, I don't really have anything for her. Sorry, destiny. <laughs> but um, that, that was my plan for the yeah. event. No, you 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 killed it. You did great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. We got hang on blues hair. Sinister is voiced by the same actor as well. Christopher Britton. Also, Sinister, great voice. Perfect. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect that sinister was, voice. That was amazing. And Adrian Hugh? Huh? Yes. Hugh? Mm -hmm. Yes. As Nightcrawler. I can't wait for that episode. Like, hurry up, please. I know. I, I love Nightcrawler. Same mm -hmm. here. These uh yeah. I actually blame him and Kitty Pride, like Excalibur, for making mm -hmm. me the the longtime reader. Like they that's Excalibur was the book that got like X-Men got me into comics. Excalibur is what got me hooked. So nice. I always blame Kitty Pride and Nightcrawler. It's their fault. It's their fault I live like this. Uh, <laughs> i'm not taking no, any <laughs> really like the, it's the x-men's fault that i'm in debt right now with all this yeah. stuff behind <laughs> me like <laughs> thank you disney thanks yeah <laughs> <laughs> they did it and so okay let's go there let's go into the the i guess the next episode within the same episode which is part one of life death uh we're trying our best not to talk about the comics based hmm on the storylines in case there's anyone here that's going to be watching and listening uh that have not read the comics uh because let's face it there's a lot of x-men fans that have only ever watched the cartoons and never read the comics i don't want to mm -hmm. spoil have any kind of potential spoilers mm -hmm. uh but this is a three-parter if for anyone that doesn't know uh this is part one even though it's kind of like even though it's like a point five of an episode uh and i mean life death just I'm just going to tell everyone now, if it goes the way I think it's going to go, hold on to your butts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are, we're going to be in for something here, but we're starting to see that, uh, that relationship uh, really blow. Mm. Again, here we go. This is what I mean. Everyone's hooking up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're getting that. Relationship. Storm didn't get enough like love in the previous series. I mean, they, yeah. they, uh, you know, the, the romance between her and Wolverine in an alternate reality, but like, that's kind of it. Whereas, and, and also, I guess uh, that, like, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and then, but then I always love the Forge and Storm romance uh, or, you know, relationship in the comics. Like, it's great to see them bringing that in. <laughs> Same here. I, I'm, I'm loving this too. I like that uh, he's trying his best and he's, She's not handling things well as no as as you wouldn't in in her scenario but I like that you know he's he's got his ranch he he totally talks like I think in this whole scene that we're even looking at here he's even like of all the things that I can create I'll never create anything as perfect as you. Mm. Great line by mm -hmm. the way. <laughs> yeah. Gentlemen, hold on to that one. <laughs> 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 first be a genius who can invent everything so that's yes. context <laughs> yeah <laughs> first yeah yeah hey, what do you mean you 
you know create stuff <laughs> yeah they <laughs> created me like yeah it's like <laughs> it's kind of weird I don't know. yeah you're right Father? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah wait oh fair point but then storm okay. <laughs> storm's retort is so good too <laughs> yeah i mean the backhand right to the face yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> kind of right. deserving honestly but like damn like, all you've yeah. created Despine? is a fool <laughs> well that I think that's the great thing about Storm and the way this show has presented Storm is mm. she is like she doesn't have time for people's mm -mm. bullshit. Mm -mm. She doesn't have time for games. Like you this is a woman who is powerful. She knows it and you have to be real and straightforward with her. Otherwise mm -hmm. yeah. she has no time for you. Mhm. Mm and I, I, I again, I have to call uh, Allison Seeley Smith, the voice actress. Like, w we're getting such a a different uh, s side of her, right? Like in this series, because you know, I mean, the original series, like, there's great moments with Storm, and she's a great character, but it's very like operatic and very kind of like Saturday morning cartoon. It's great to see these like dramatic, nuanced. Uh, scenes and vocal performances from her like she is just crushing it as as storm <laughs> yeah. yeah i think this was probably the best side of storm we've seen so far in this show and there are plenty of great storm <laughs> moments in this show so far mm. but this one i think allison did a fantastic job at her performance for storm here you really could like, I think the first one that did it for me was when she lost her power. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And because the, what she was saying and, and her tone of voice and this one, she kind of like upped the game on that and just gave a phenomenal performance for this episode. I, I, I can't wait to see her as storm again, just hear her voice again. I, I have to say like, and in this series, like I've always loved, like, if you've been reading the comics, if anyone's been reading the comics at any point in time, Storm will automatically be in your Mount Rushmore of X-Men. Right. Yes. right. That's, that's just how it is. Uh, the movies have never really fully have done her justice. Uh, you know, we all joke about what does lightning do to a frog, right? All that stuff. <laughs> the, uh, you know, but even the cartoon still did pretty good, but this is just like everything. Everything has been perfect. Because the original cartoon, you know, it was definitely a more like mature storm, a storm who had things figured out and balanced. But in, in the comics, certainly the Chris Claremont storm is someone who is constantly questioning or, or constantly on this journey of evolution and discovery. Right. And, and right. you know, the, you know, life, death being at the center of that all being such a pivotal moment um and actually i would i would say like you know avoiding spoilers because life death in the comics is a multi-part thing but i think after watching this episode you could read that first life death part one comic um because this is kind of a, in some ways an abridged version of that like that gives you even more um uh scope on on the story and i think that in that comic there's a lot of internal monologue where through the medium of comics you're able to under to read what a character is thinking and their inner thoughts i thought this episode did a good job of taking that subtext and having it come still come through in the dialogue um but yeah it's it's i highly recommend if you haven't read the comic uh and you enjoyed this episode and want like more uh, seeking it out more context and more just more mm -hmm. fleshed out again we're only at part one of three <laughs> yeah. like, like we're and i think the series ends at life death part two and three correct well um, there's a no. life death part two and then there's like a three part uh finale yeah that is called tolerance's extinction maybe? yeah oh i don't like the, that's a yeah extinction on there the and there that's not good <laughs> <laughs> that's, well uh, tolerance is extinction is actually something that it's the title of one i i like read it today um 
it's the title of a comic storyline. Ti- uh, yeah, I don't know which one. Hmm. Either that or or it was said in like the comics by somebody, but I think it might be a title of a storyline. For there's, some reason in my head, I'm thinking Zero Tolerance. Yeah, there's Operation Zero Tolerance, and oh, then there's E E is for Extinction. Which that's is it, the, E is for Extinction. Yeah, that's I think, the Grant Morrison, yeah. New X-Men, the first storyline, I think. Yeah. And then the I Extinction think... Agenda. Agenda. So there's... <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, a lot. I think I heard... In yeah. extinction. I think I heard E is for extinction is like uh people were speculating like that is probably the storyline that they're gonna go with or something. Mm, wow. Yeah. Yeah, just only because they made Genosha uh part of the oh the damn yeah. Nation, yeah, right. Okay, no yeah. spoilers. No but spoilers, like, but... yeah. If you know the <laughs> yeah. comic, like, yeah, wow, that's because they've been talking a lot about Genosha as a nation, and that's mm-hmm. like kind of been referenced in all of the episodes thus far. Yeah, they've been wow. definitely <laughs> planting the seeds uh, yeah. for depression, uh, <laughs> right? Like we're, I want to throw out this Easter egg too from this episode. Uh, the X Factor. Yes. So yes. cool. So I cool. had to pause and rewind. I was like, I got to look at this. I got to pause for a second. And I saw Quicksilver was there too. I was like, oh my God, like the Quicksilver we knew from the MCU is obviously not a mutant. And so now to see Quicksilver here, as a mutant is just like really cool. He's back. <laughs> so he's back. back. He's on our side now. <laughs> <laughs> it's I I love this too. Again, because again, this is just another iconic team. Forge was not part of this team. I don't remember, but this is a great way. No, to... he was. Oh, okay. oh, oh. He. I mean, maybe he joined at the tail end of the Larry Stroman Peter David portion in the comics, but in the original cartoon or in the previous series he was the leader of this team of x factor right hang on which also in the intro to the show there's like they cl- they show like a clip from that episode with Iceman yeah. uh, yep. in his like costume mm-hmm. uh, super cool again i just gotta call this one out christopher negri thank you for also being here and hanging out as per usual uh just on a funny side note i think it's hilarious we're watching gotham city tonight <laughs> but talking x-men dude we're Next week, we're going to be talking some Joker. There's the Joker 2 trailer drops next week. We are going to talk about it. And I, Alice is I got already a bat like, wing behind me. You know? Yeah, we got. <laughs> we still like, we still love our DC here, but we have to talk X Men. It's just that's yeah. the rule. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Tony Tafoti also points out for just modest beach pick of himself, reminded <laughs> me of the old Marvel swimsuit. Sw- I, specials and i it did too and the first thing i did was look up to see if forge had a splash page in a swimsuit edition because i was like i wonder if this is a straight pull but he also there's issues where he's wearing these short shorts yeah i think it's more about getting the uh the daisy dukes in there (laughs) yeah but i just love that that's what he has hanging up like this is just a picture of him (laughs) at the beach and him grilling like he's holding yeah. a spatula. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's so good. <laughs> it's a, it's a, this is, but this was such a great little Easter egg. And uh, it's, hang on, what? I think I took a, I think I found a screenshot of this too. There was, uh, there was these two, or these three in uh, the opening. Yes. Oh this yeah, yeah, there well. yeah. Right. Super cool. Polaris. Polaris. Mm-hmm. It, well, this made me pop because I was just like, oh, oh, X, you know, because mm-hmm. again, anytime we get anything extra. God, uh, they're just giving us everything that we I want. I know. With this and that's show. why you have to watch the intro every mm-hmm. time because yeah. they change it for each episode. And that's on yeah. purpose so you don't skip the intro. Okay. First off, tell me what fan would skip the intro. <laughs> I mean, I made a video about it. It kind of like blew up. So, oh, everyone in the comments agrees, though. <laughs> right? Because this was someone the actually said, off. yeah. Someone actually said I accidentally skipped the intro out of habit. Then I had to rewind again <laughs> to go back to the beginning and watch it. <laughs> yeah. See, I can I can respect that. We all make mistakes. Yeah. So you know, I mean, every other show I skip the intro, but for this one, mandatory. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I love because it's different every time. I love. I mean, even yeah. we even now have ponytail Jean, like further mm-hmm. cementing the idea that like long hair Jean and ponytail Jean are two different genes. Yeah, 
and that's and that's something I didn't even click in. Like the Marvel Legends figure for ninety seven comes with ponytail and hair down. Got mm-hmm. by two. So now They're you got to buy two characters. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> two jeans, man. This is how it goes. You got to have both. If you don't, <laughs> are can you call yourself a real fan? Uh, <laughs> Right, but this. Hang on, and I want to get to because we're we are. See, we talk about X Men. We go over an hour. We try to keep things tight yeah. to an hour here, but we can't. Not when X. <laughs> Every <laughs> like show I've been on, we can't keep it to an hour. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> the uh, it might I be think, my fault. <laughs> oh, oh no, this is definitely. I blame X Men a hundred percent. There's oh, just, yeah. There, there's so much to chew on, uh, and as we get further to the end of this episode too, we kind of now that we're establishing like. He's trying things. She's trying to feel the, the power, like trying to see if she can feel her power at all. Is anything, you know, is she feeling fixed? Right. Uh, mm. And back to normal. Uh, out comes this owl. <laughs> mm. uh, and then we have like a whole other, another, like this, this show is like nailing it on the horror as well. I have yeah. to say. Yeah. Like owls I are have, creepy. Owls are creepy. And she has a whole <laughs> run in with this owl right at the end of the show. And that's how it ends, which is, is it an owl? Is it an owl? Who do you think it is, Alex? <laughs> well, they call it the adversary. Yeah. <laughs> which again, like, you know, no spoilers here, but if you're a comic fan, we all know what happens to the X-Men when the adversary shows up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're going to go there uh, in this series this soon, but you know, dude. Okay. Don't ever say that because we all kind of thought, Oh, they're not going to do the Madeline prior thing this yeah. early. Oh no. They went full Inferno. Like they did. And yeah. They didn't even give us time to breathe. They just said, no. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> we're, we're, we're running. So I have a feeling like this, this might move uh, pretty quick too like with life death i got like again huh i i don't know i'm this show has me so excited every i'm lucky i get to i'm in the time zone where i can be a midnight mutant oh. and <laughs> i can watch when it just drops at midnight so uh wait so is it is it set up so that it drops at midnight even uh, on pacific. the west coast oh it's pacific every okay yeah so it's 3 a.m oh. i'm on the east coast so 3 a.m here yeah. I'm asleep. Yeah, same. <laughs> I, mean, like, I would be too. That's so why I don't yeah. even know. <laughs> so I used to stay up until 3 a.m. and then I got a job that I was like, I'm not gonna, you know, stay up all night anymore. Yeah. So Ugh, responsibility. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's not like I have to go to an office. My office is literally here. I work from home, yeah. editing stuff all the time. So in my own hours, I just choose not to stay up till 3 a.m and oh, watch the show because then i'm like okay by the time it ends it's gonna be 3 30 i'm not gonna fall asleep till four yeah you're gonna it's be so gonna keyed f- up thinking about so it so tired and i have this plan of waking up at like 9 30 every morning and enjoying my morning cartoons <laughs> and and that's also why i don't watch it at night so i can enjoy it as a morning cartoon yeah and eat my breakfast not cereal i haven't had cereal in a while but like my breakfast <laughs> knowing it drops at midnight i would not have been able to sleep and the worst part was like when the first two episodes dropped like i was like i'm staying up i can't i can't not do it and it didn't help that <laughs> like the disney youtube channel was playing a live countdown to when the episode oh, really? dropped so they did a whole thing where they had like a chat going and people getting hyped and i was like wow okay that's Damn. it i'm, I'm staying yeah. up and then i was like i'll I'll get super excited and it'll be so easy for me to sleep. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. After episode two, it was like I was buzzing. I was drop yeah. kicking invisible ninjas. <laughs> I, like, you name it. Like, I could not sleep. It was like three in the morning and I was like, oh my God, I'm still wide awake. I am. This show was a gift. Yeah. Brought yeah. upon us. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I will say, after see we saw the first three episodes at the premiere right and um like you could tell everyone was just alive and buzzing and you know it's, it's the middle of the week and <laughs> everyone's just like staying up late right i think i my friends and i left the after party at like 11 
or 11 30 and we got back to the airbnb it was down the road and i didn't go to sleep till probably 3 30 or 4 a.m because my mind was just so awake mm, that right. i i couldn't fall asleep it was it was um like a high almost because <laughs> that theater was blowing up it was blowing uh, up during well, I the episode imagine i i got to sit in the very front row and this is at the el capitan theater and it's disney owned so they always have like these theatrical opening curtain things and it's it was amazing they had these uh magnet magnetos the cereal the boxes yeah yep. they had uh, different types of cereal you could take i didn't take the cereal i didn't think about it, it was just way too crowded in there that's the only thing way too crowded you're not the first to tell us that yeah that's so what they, we've heard yeah like people it want was to like, take the cereal and they're like ah, i can't do it <laughs> yeah no I, I i got a hot pocket and some popcorn <laughs> <laughs> and water and Fantastic. i couldn't eat i didn't touch my popcorn at all and i had like a few bites of my hot pocket and i was just this was during the the show and i just couldn't eat it anymore because one i was so invested in the show and two i just like didn't have the hunger to do it i was like too hyped up for the show <laughs> right. and uh and it, because it wasn't like an official I mean, it was official, but like it wasn't like a red carpet event where like you have to be invited and it's not a lot of people going. It was like a fan event. So a whole bunch of people got to go. That's why it was so large and and, and so many people were there. But yeah, I I was hoping I could get some cereal, especially those Magnetos, but I didn't get a chance to. <laughs> oh, man, because that sounds aw like again, like because we had Jerry Gaylord on last week, who's one of the storyboard artists. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah, he was saying the same, very, very similar things where it was just the, it was such a amazing experience. It's just then just yeah. gave me more FOMO, uh, yeah. <laughs> right? I was at home eating FOMOs while you guys were having Magnetos. <laughs> no, I was thinking like, if I was home right now, I would really hate everybody here. <laughs> oh I, see it's like i was stoked for everybody that got to go because oh yeah, yeah definitely like definitely just i mean like, like man, that's so, such a cool yeah thing. like well, i'm not that... like salty like that but i would just have so much fomo that i'd be like i hate you guys but i don't actually hate you guys <laughs> yes, yeah okay <laughs> right it's like, like that kind of the yeah exchanges like... you guys had to deal with waiting you know a week for the rest of the world to catch up and, i and, and for like the madeline that. prior episode too it's like you couldn't talk you know, you're just waiting for everyone else to hear catch it. up yeah. i yeah. loved knowing before everybody else did because <laughs> i was like who i have all this power <laughs> like just wait till episode three <laughs> yeah it's, and but, uh, yeah i think the thing that would have frustrated frustrated me the most about seeing that early is because that episode is so cool I would want yeah. to see it again immediately. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I um I obviously watched the episodes after the premiere uh, when they released. Um, and then I watched them again on Saturday morning. Cause I had to, you know. Of, of course. Right. FOMOs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> right. Like, no, I've been doing the same thing. I can't help it, but it's like Right now, Disney Plus is dropping like this. And between this and The Bad Batch, like we are getting some amazing animation. Like, mm. and it, it does feel like, you know, you, you feel it's, it's it's a bit of a time machine because you do get yeah. to kind of go back and you kind of have a a Saturday morning again, in a, in a sense. Like if you, it's hard for me to wait. So my Saturday mornings are now Thursday mornings in a, in a sense. Yeah. But it's yeah, like, no, how, how can you wait? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, like no, I I couldn't wait. Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah, I was trying to think of who was someone. Oh, someone was trying to one of the comic artists I follow, and he was like, "Oh, I wanted to wait till Saturday." And it's just like, yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do yeah. it. <laughs> right. Watch it, it was, again on Saturday. Just pretend that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then right? just get your bowl of cereal and sit in front of the TV and play it. Just, just <laughs> go for it. Yeah, it's yeah. It it has been such an absolute blast, but it's uh. You know what? Because we're we're ranking up here to an hour thirty. Let's uh let's kind of wrap up here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean next week. I I uh, let's see if I can find what uh, next week's episode is. The I it's I not can... Life Death Part Two. I know it is that. not. No. It is called Remember It. Ooh. Oh, Gambit based I want... episode. <sighs> well, I feel like we're due. We're like we're, they need to address. Yeah. 
the rogue and magneto elephant in the room yeah. we need an episode to like dig right. in to this love triangle they've been teasing us mm -hmm. with oh when season. poor remy finds out about what happened in the savage land yeah oh, that's what the memory that's what the... really got to me in that yep. second episode yeah. so you know I can only imagine what he's going to be like when he finds out about what happened in the Savage Land. We got a little sneak peek of it in episode three, but you don't know the whole story. Right. Also, another thing that I'm pretty sure Disney did not know was <laughs> like, I, I still think that whole episode, Disney had no clue. They had it were just like, because the, the amount, like, and I've said this last week too, where it's like the amount of cunt that Madeline Pryor is serving after her Sailor Moon <laughs> transformation is <laughs> unparalleled to like that anything. was like a sexual episode a little bit. That was a bit adult that kind of episode. Yes. And like Madeline was really serving all that. And I loved yes. like when she uncrossed her legs, I was like, girl, what? Yes. That angle? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like it's one of the again, like that's why you can't like it's like it's the best part about watching it at midnight. You get to watch it in the dark and it's midnight, <laughs> right? The worst part about watching it at midnight, because shit like that happens and you're just like, oh my God. And now you're awake for the next three hours. Because yeah. I, like, <laughs> like I said, like if, they, if, if they're doing Remember It and if it's remembering what happened in the Savage Land for next week, that's also going to be a very spicy episode. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, and again... Sure. Yeah. Anyone ever goes back and reads those old uncanny issues from Jim Lee, you will know. You will find <laughs> out. And it yep. is, and, and again, this show has not even shied away from it. No. Like, and I love that. I love that it's still a show that kids could watch, but it has those like adult elements where it appeals to the adults who grew up watching the original show. Cause they know the people who are the majority of people who are going to watch this show are people that grew up with, the animated series so they're older they gotta kind of like push the boundaries a bit with that yep and do like more stuff that we would be uh it, like into more and and storylines and things because even in the comics you know it was like kids would read the comics but like there was stuff in there for adults so i was like whoa and uh, oh, i yeah. love i love to see that now yeah, the, life, the life death comic like yeah. yeah and that's what this episode was about it was like you know we're gonna kind of move past the kids stuff like yeah you know, we're gonna grow up a little bit here yeah like yeah. jubilee grown up yeah yeah yep all like just all of it like i think just even the whole like just for like what is it episode two the united nations the mm -hmm. yeah. they're doing a whole jan six thing right out of the gate yeah and I was like, yeah, this is definitely for an older audience. Like mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. Right? It's absolutely perfect. <laughs> it's yeah. like everything I could have wanted yes. from an X-Men animated revival. I also just really want to quickly say, I love the aesthetic of this show. I love the the drawings, the animation, the designs. Mm -hmm. Like, they, I just love looking at this show. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think they did such a great job on this whole design of the show and the characters and they all look amazing and you know i know a lot of people didn't like the design change but one it's a different animation mm -hmm. and two characters don't have to be that defined anymore in their in their attire you don't have to like see every one of their muscles through their clothing because clothing right. don't work like that <laughs> right you know, unless you're wearing yeah. like a second skin clothing don't work like that where you <laughs> see all the definition in their muscles yeah, I, yeah i'm loving more the, like a realism to yeah. it well it's just it's just to me it looks sleeker mm -hmm. you know it just looks like i know like what is it right before the show dropped every everywhere dudes were like freaking out over rogue's ass yeah that was and one it, frame it was <laughs> one frame and if you yeah. ever looked at her turnarounds yeah like, yeah. trust me someone just had a heyday that day like, <laughs> that's really Literally. all I, and look i love that that picture that meme as much mm -hmm. as anyone else <laughs> but also i know my rogue <laughs> yeah and i know that that's just that's one frame uh yeah right so uh, let's get into some plugs here but before we do that just want to send uh love to chad stewart the chat yeah uh, you know condolences and go go see and spend time with your family uh maybe we'll see you next week but just whenever you're ready come on back uh but let's do some 
let's do some quick plugs here. Uh, let's start off with uh, you got some new Mondo stuff coming out tomorrow. Oh, yeah. We got a uh, Tila for Masters of the Universe. You know, maybe a little bit of a Jean Grey vibe here to keep it on <laughs> on brand. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, uh, she's um, she's available right now on um, Mondoshop.com. Uh, and she's uh um yeah she's she's gonna be available till the uh it's a it's a wind timed window so till the 12th yes um you have till the 12th to order her um and yeah she's uh i just love these photographs <laughs> that uh, uh raul barrera does for us and yeah i mean as you can see multiple expressions you got kind of the 2000x look uh there's an angry kind of you know uh Xena warrior princess expression love the snake head dress so yeah uh, it's super super cool <laughs> these are and shout again, out to yeah yeah oh, shout yeah. out to tommy hodges uh, the sculptor uh, who who brought tila to life um yeah i mean just really awesome just in re just rounding out the motu the motu crew right like look at that that's yeah and also it. shout out to, to uh yeah to uh uh, Mark Bristow, our our painter, who paint, who did such a beautiful job on the uh, paint master uh, for for her. Man, only what? Only two fifty as well. Come on, like no brainer. <laughs> uh, I do want to go to the collectibles here as well, just to kind of give people a heads up. The Rogue, Rogue almost gone. <laughs> almost gone. Get so her while you can <laughs> get her while you can, because we don't know if she's ever coming back. So be sure to <laughs> like again. We we got more characters coming uh, later this year, uh, probably sooner than you might think. I might I'm totally speaking out of turn on this. <laughs> yeah, well, we've, no, we've, we've, so we, yeah, we've we, we've revealed Cyclops, who you know, as you know, is Ooh. like more badass than ever in this show, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and he's going to be uh modeled after the 97 version of him so yeah i'm really looking forward to people seeing that <laughs> yeah dude these yeah, are she looks phenomenal thanks so good this is uh yeah i, I love rogue too so <laughs> it was uh <laughs> yeah re a, a dream come true to get to uh, work on this figure it's um, the whole line and your batman animated series line as well also just again given given shout outs to that <laughs> beautiful stuff absolutely like love it love it love it and then before uh just one second right before we get to whoop, hang on i gotta get all my links in an order here the whoop, come on let me can do this i this is not my first time i swear okay <laughs> and alice who will be back next week because she does want to talk about that joker 2 trailer because it is one of her most anticipated movies of the year uh, this is her comic, All Haven Academy, over on webtoons.com. Uh, the link for this and the link for Mondo as well is also in the description below, as well as Kevin's Toying Around Con. Uh, there's a link for that as well in the description. So be sure to check out her. Like, check this out. She's almost at like 1.3 1, 1. million every time. Wow. Every week she goes up another like 100,000 views on her comic so you know what that's awesome big props to her uh she's doing amazing work that's why she's not here half the time now because she's got <laughs> she's she all of a sudden realized deadlines oops uh, <laughs> yeah oh i know that feeling <laughs> <laughs> right so that's where that so if anyone's been wondering where where alice has been that's where she's been so not only does she have her work deadlines she's got her comic book deadlines there but she'll be back Next week as well. Stefania, it's been amazing having you here. So please let us know where can people find you? Well, y'all can find me on Instagram and TikTok uh, and Twitter. I'm also there too. And YouTube. Um, so let me just spell out my name because <laughs> it's really long. So on the screen, you have Stefania that you can check out. Uh, but my last name is Sasano, S-A-S-S-A-N-O. And on Instagram and no, just Instagram, it's Stefania underscore Sasano. And on TikTok and Twitter, it's Stefania Sasano. No underscore. No. So that's the only <laughs> Instagram wasn't available. I don't know why. Who has my name out there? But 
Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't available <laughs> when I got Instagram at like 13 years old. <laughs> but your name is spelled out also in the description. So if you need to look yes. her up, you can just copy and paste here. It's from a long YouTube. name. You'll be able <laughs> to know. find her. In fact, uh, if you're watching this on the replay, uh, I will have a link to your channel uh, on the description as well. I will add oh, that Oh, perfect. On. Yeah, I mean, if you if you subscribe to my YouTube, <laughs> you don't expect videos every week because it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, but it, I just can't get them out every week, man. Once a month, it's once every few months. I it is know. not easy. I'm going to no. say this like, well, because for the level of like, because for us, it's easy because we just click StreamYard, press record, yeah. we go, we're done. Uh, yeah. The kind of stuff that you do and a lot of like other like other friends of ours and stuff, they do like the whole. Like, well, just again, look at the, the rankings of all the, the costumes you do. There's editing, there's graphics, there's the whole bit. So and it's much looking editing. all mm. right. So much. So. Editing's my job now. And I'm like, there's so <laughs> much editing. <laughs> so much. That's that's pretty cool. Uh <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all for podcasts, so it's easier to do, but like YouTube doing my own stuff, I always try and spend a good amount of time on it. The podcast, I could just get out, you know, quickly like that. <laughs> My stuff, I take my time to yeah. do. Right. And I like to add <laughs> funny elements in it. Like in my last one I did, <laughs> I just like to make it funny. And plus, I'm, I'm like filming this by myself and I'm just cracking myself up. And I'm like, these got to be in the video because if it's funny to me, I'm sure it'll be funny to someone else out there watching. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, you're not wrong. That's how we, that's how, like, I have another show, Toy Anxiety. That's how we started. We thought we were funny. <laughs> So, <laughs> we're like let's talk about toys in front of people let's see what happens <laughs> uh, we did all right for ourselves so i met alex <laughs> right so we, we did all right uh so with that said uh we're gonna end the show here uh we will see you next week i will see you next week tuesday on toy anxiety and then we'll be back here next week to talk about episode the next episode remember mm. it re remembering it right remember it and uh, i've already forgot it i've already forgot it <laughs> I'm so brutal at this and uh and Joker too. We got to talk a little bit about that. I mean, this did start off as a DC show because we felt bad for DC and they needed more love. Uh, you ready to change your name now to like, I don't know. Someone like, said Genosha tonight. Gen oh, Genosha, Genosha tonight. tonight. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. I was always thinking <laughs> Daily Bugle tonight. Ah, uh, Maybe we'll see. Mm. But yeah, <laughs> if it's a Marvel centric <laughs> episode, just switch it. Have the two different intros just in yeah. case people kind of know. Oh, it's a Marvel episode tonight. Look, It'll it's all entertainment. Why don't we just call ourselves entertainment tonight? Done. Yeah. <laughs> am I still Easy. on? Why didn't I think of that? We still on the Jay on Geek Dad Life? Am I this Sunday? Oh, I better talk to Jay. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll find out. I might be on Geek Dad Life this Sunday too. We'll find out. Awesome. Okay. With that said, everyone have a great night and we will see you next week. Bye.